You've heard about Hornady's brand new 6mm R cartridge and you're either a first adopter or you're very interested in the 6.5 Grendel and are looking for something a bit more. In this video, we're going to discuss what you need to know about this brand new cartridge before you go buy or build your next firearm. What's up everyone, welcome Squad Squad and welcome to Slav Guns. I'm glad to have you here. Earlier this year, gun owners learned of the new 6mm advanced rifle cartridge when it was filed with SAMI. Experienced gun owners did not have to think too hard to realize that it was Hornady's brand new cartridge. After all, simply looking at the name, PRC, ARC, it rhymes. And just this summer, Hornady made the public announcement. So, what is the brand new cartridge? Who is it for and should you consider it? Let's take a look. 6mm ARC is very similar to another cartridge that has been around for a bit, the 6mm AR, both of which are variants of the 6.5 Grendel cartridge, which itself is a variant of the 7.62x39 Russian cartridge found in the AK-47 and designed in 1943 and also used on firearms such as the SKS. While there are some small differences, the main premise behind the variant change is to take the original 308 caliber bullet in the 7.62x39 and replacing it with something that's going to be a bit smaller and more streamlined. What this is going to accomplish is that you're going to have a round that's going to be able to be shot at further distances at higher velocities. While it is true that the smaller bullets are not going to have as much energy leaving the muzzle, they are going to be more effective and carry more energy downrange. This was the central premise behind the 6.5 Grendel and what makes it a great intermediate hunting cartridge. There were, of course, people who decided to take it one step further and came out with a number of Wildcat cartridges that necked down either the 6.5 Grendel or the 7.62x39 case down to 6mm with or without other changes to the case. Hornady took it a step further to standardize the cartridge and SAMI spec their 6mm variant and thus the 6mm ARC cartridge is born. So, is 6mm ARC a solution in search of a problem, or does it solve something? That is a great question and one that came up as a comment on one of my live streams. 6mm ARC originated from a Department of Defense request for an unspecified unit. As you may know, in recent history the average engagement distance has grown, with many enemies now being beyond the practical limit of 556, which is around 5 or 600 yards. Yes, you can shoot a 556 caliber round further, however it's good for punching paper, but it's simply not going to have the energy to put down anything else. The answer is of course and has been the 308 and 65 Creedmoor cartridges. There is however a price, a big price. Both calibers require a larger firearm and in the case of a semi-automatic AR, the AR-10, a significant increase in weight and a big limit to magazine capacity. 6mm ARC is the proposed solution to that problem. While it doesn't have the energy or stopping power of 6.5 Creedmoor or 308 at closer distances, 6mm ARC does outperform 308 at longer distances as the heavier 308 bullet starts losing meaningful velocity. As designed, 6mm ARC stays supersonic out past 1000 yards. A good analogy for this would be as follows. Would you want to be run over by someone weighing 100 pounds or 300 pounds? But what about if it's after we run a mile? I'll pick the 300, guy, 300 pound guy any day of the week because we mostly have exhausted our energy and we're not going to be coming at you at the same velocity. Energy is a byproduct of bullet weight and velocity. Near the muzzle, a bigger bullet will produce significantly more knockdown energy. However, as you force that bullet to fly longer, the bigger, heavier projectiles will bleed off energy much faster than the more efficient and streamlined lightweight projectile. 
This is 308 versus 6 millimeter arc in a nutshell. In a different video, we will be taking a look at the differences and compare the 6 millimeter arc versus a number of alternatives, such as 223, 65 Grendel, 65 Friedmore, 308, and 224 Valkyrie in more detail. Moving on, does 6 millimeter arc have staying power? There is a risk to being a first adopter, and gun owners have seen calibers hyped up before only to slowly fade into history. The most recent example of which is 224 Valkyrie. Admit it, it's dead. The good news is 6mm arc and its close variant have been around in the Wildcat community for some time now, and there have been a number of other 6mm 7.62x39 variants, many of which are actually used in bench rest precision shooting disciplines. Furthermore, since it's launched, we've had many good signs in what I feel is needed for the caliber to survive. First, this is very much a hand loader friendly cartridge. Being based off of the 6.5 Grendel and 7.62x39 cartridges, there's plenty of brass available. Furthermore, being 6mm, there are many bullet choices available, unlike 224 Valkyrie, which, while being 224, was designed around a new 90 grain Sierra bullet. Further adding to the staying power since launch, we've had Hornady, Lee, and RCBS announce reloading dies for the new cartridge. We haven't had this with other cartridges so quickly. What this means is that in the unlikely event that 6mm arc falls into oblivion, you would still be able to load your own ammo without many issues. There's plenty of 6.5 Grendel brass, and there's plenty of 6mm bullets. We've also seen good signs on the commercial side, although the current crisis and associated buying spree hasn't helped. So let's break this down into three parts. Ammo, firearms, and parts to build your own. So, there are three types of ammo available, and all three come from a Hornady. 6mm Arc Match, 6mm Arc Black, and an announced but unreleased Precision Hunter. While the cartridge was designed around a heavier, longer, slimmer projectile, the cartridge has shown that would be an awesome varmint round with lighter weight bullets. Unfortunately, there are no such factory loads available, perhaps yet. The cartridge is currently SAMI spec so other manufacturers can produce it, but for now we only have Hornady. Finally, it seems like ammo is becoming available more regularly. The best two places that I've found for ammo, particularly 6mm arc ammo, are Brownells and Palmetto State Armory, and you'll find the links in the description below. Another good place to check would possibly be Graphs, where I have half purchased some ammo before. Factory gun-wise, I do think there's so far a bit of a disappointment. As of the time of recording this video, in the middle early part of October 2020, we've had many companies announced firearms. However, very few factory firearms are available for purchase today. The majority of the firearms out there in the wild today are either media samples or guns that gun owners built themselves. On the semi-auto AR-15 market, I'm currently seeing firearms available from CMMG, Santan Tactical, Barrett, and APF. These are all premium offerings and what's notably missing are low and mid-priced offerings. For bolt actions, the only one that I found that's currently available is from Uintah Precision, the maker of the bolt action AR-15 uppers. And even though Howa, Savage, Christensen, and Mossberg were listed as launch companies, there are no firearms available yet. I'm guessing we'll see some of that at the end of the year or for SHOT Show 2021. Actually, I take that back. There's also a bolt action from Proof Research available as well. So, why have we not seen mid-priced offerings? I believe a large part of this is COVID and the current gun buying spree. The majority of gun companies are trying to produce as many guns as they can. There is little business sense to produce a newly launched niche caliber when you already cannot meet the demand for plain Jane Vanilla 223. And the reason why the guns that are available today are as expensive as they are, well, for using this barrel. 
the carbon fiber wrap barrel from Proof Research with a street price of around $800 by itself. So moving on, what about the parts? This is where we have the most availability right now. As I stated before, I believe the vast majority of 6mm arc chambered firearms out there in the wild today are guns that were build, built sorry, either brand new or converted from 6.5 Grendel. Because this caliber is based off of the 6.5 Grendel cartridge, you're either one or three parts away on an AR-15. For an AR-15, if you already have a 6.5 Grendel firearm, all you need to do is change out the barrel and most likely the gas tube as 6.5 Grendel is generally going to use a different gas system than 6mm arc. You would reuse the same bolt carrier group and bolt along with the magazines. If you have an AR-15 in a different caliber, then you would need to, a new barrel, a new bolt carrier group and magazines as you cannot use standard 223 caliber magazines. You need a different bolt carrier group because the bolt face is different on 223 versus the larger 7.62x39 bolt face as we see on the 6mm arc, 6.5 Grendel and other variants. Magazine wise you would need to use 6.5 Grendel magazines, um, either metal mags such as those from Elander, C Products or Duramag or these brand new polymer magazines from 65 for 6.5 Grendel from Amen 2. The one part not mentioned yet is going to be the gas tube and you'll either need to get a new one which will come with the barrel such as the proof or you will need to purchase a new one. So let's focus on the barrels. The great news is there are currently barrels available and announced for any budget. I have three such barrels here which are the basis of my builds. At the top end you have options from both established companies and smaller precision focused custom builders. The one barrel already mentioned is this carbon fiber wrapped 18 inch barrel from Proof Research and it is the barrel that's used in a number of high end builds. This barrel features a 1 in 7.5 twist, 5 8 by 24 fretted muzzle and a rifle plus one gas system. This barrel has absolutely the best fit and finish I've seen, particularly when it comes to the carbon fiber wrap. You cannot feel the seam here at all. If you want the best and you can justify the cost of a mid-priced AR-15 on just the barrel, I highly recommend it. I have a build in mind for this barrel and I hope to complete it soon. If you don't need carbon fiber and you want something that was handcrafted or designed for you, there are also options available for that. You have at least three or four barrel, I'm sorry, you have at least three or four custom barrel makers who can spin you up a barrel to your specifications including the length, the twist rate and the gas system. What I have here and the one I'm most excited about is the 24 inch barrel from T-Box. T-Box is a small manufacturer with a focus on precision through attention to detail. Once again, the fit and finish on this barrel is top notch and what's great is that T-Box included a matched bolt with the barrel. For this barrel, we went with a 1 in 7 twist rate, 5 8 by 24 fretted muzzle brake and once again a rifle plus one gas system. I also took their MCE because it looks like Mickey ears. Uh, muzzle brake which seems to do a really good job. These barrels are typically not an in stock part but they are instead made to order and are very reasonably priced at just under $500 when purchased from Sergeant of Arms. Link in the description below. The barrel is expected to be a tack driver and this is the gun that we'll use to push 6mm arc to its limits. Maybe really crazy limits. At the lower end of the price spectrum, you have options from a number of companies. The launch partners included Faxon, Ballistic Advantage, and CMMG, all priced around $200 to $300. Ballistic Advantage did a run of barrels for launch, which I have not seen since, and CMMG barrels are now available on their website. Where it gets interesting is with Faxon and this barrel, the 14 and a half inch Faxon manufactured but spec'd and marketed by Brownells. 
Faxon is planning on making their own spec barrels for later this year. For bolt action rifles, there are even more choices, and almost any competent gunsmith or barrel manufacturer would have 6mm R creamers and would be able to spin one up for you. While I do not have the guns built yet, we should have two builds including barrels from Oregon Mountain Rifle and Patriot Valley Precision, both of which should shoot lights out. I recently received this carbon fiber wrap barrel from Oregon Mountain Rifle Company and the fit and finish on it is superb. Furthermore, my friend Logan over at uh, Preferred Barrel Blanks should be able to spin you up a 6mm arc chambered barrel to your specifications for your choice of bolt gun as well. There are however some points which you must consider and I hope do not create issues for the caliber. The first one relates to twist rates and the inconsistencies we found in the industry when it came to 2 to 4 Valkyrie, which prevented a smooth launch. Hornady designed the 6mm arc cartridge around a 108 grain bullet fired through a 1 and 7 and a half twist barrel. This is precisely what we have in the launch barrels from Proof Research, Odinworks, and CMMG. However, there are a number of companies that deviated away from that, namely this Brownell spec barrel manufactured by Faxon and along with a number of others I might have missed. They decided to go with a 1 in 8 twist rate for their barrels. The problem here is that the slower twist rate will have an impact on stabilizing bullets, especially if you live at sea level or in cold temperatures. As per the Burger Stability Calculator, a 1 in 8 twist rate barrel will be marginally stable, whereas a 1 in 7.5 will be stable with a 108 or 110 grain projectile. This is why for this T-Box 24 inch barrel, we went with a 1 in 7 twist even faster to increase stability around where I shoot, the northeast, closer to sea level, and where the goal is to shoot heavier projectiles. Also in the AR-15 world, there is a second potential issue around the gas system. The initial barrels, once again, Proof, Odin, and CMMG, all went with what we have here, an XL or a rifle plus one inch gas system, just like we see on this 18 inch Proof barrel. The Brownells barrel, also 18 inches, is a mid-gas length system, and some others in this 18 inch range tend to bounce between rifle and rifle plus one. Again, if you're building your own barrel, you can ask the barrel manufacturer for a gas system of your choice. Having a shorter gas system would increase reliability, but it would come at the cost of more wear and tear in a bolt carrier group and higher recoil. In either case, however, the recommendation would be to go with an adjustable gas block so that you can then tune the system to your goals and needs. Lastly, and the big one that has not caused issues yet, but may be an issue next year when we start seeing more guns, is going to be the specs for pressures. Hornady designed the cartridge for the AR-15 semi-auto platform with maximum average pressures of 52,000 PSI. The cartridge, however, is also quite suited for bolt guns, which can sustain higher pressures and where you can get another 250 to 300 feet per second velocity-wise, and that's a big deal. So far, the only factory bolt-action guns chambered in 6mm arcs are those by Uintop Precision and Proof Research. Once Howa, Savage, Mossberg start producing their guns, and then we hopefully see 6mm arc chambered guns from Ruger, we may end up with a situation where there is ammo spec just for bolt guns. The reality is 200 to 300 feet per second is just too much to leave on the table. This would then possibly cause issues and confusion with the retail public on various specifications for the caliber. Would we have a 6mm arc auto and 6mm arc while we wait for someone to blow up for a new AR-15 loading hotter bolt action rounds in it? Or do we have one standard cartridge with unrealized potential for anyone with a bolt gun who doesn't reload? And here's the thing. I'm not the only one concerned about this. At least one person I spoke with working for companies that I'm not going to mention 
but they are looking at 6 millimeter arc, as everyone should. They are concerned about this potential confusion, and we have seen this before in the past with the launch of 6.8 SPC. If you remember, it was then rechambered to 6.8 SPC2 with some SPC2 loaded, uh, loaded ammo, which would be unsafe in SPC1 chambers. Will this be an issue? Perhaps, but I am optimistic. Overall, I'm really excited about the cartridge and why I'm really interesting to see how this plays out. Will bolt gun owners have to load their own ammo to maximize the rifle's potential? Or will non-hand loaders also be able to get the most out of the cartridge? Will Hornady respect the caliber in the future? It's certainly interesting and we will find out. So that's what you need to know about Hornady's brand new 6mm ARC before you buy or build your gun. In future videos, we'll take a closer look at how the cartridge compares to some other peers, and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you these two 6mm arc builds and the third build around the proof research barrel. So, are you excited for 6mm arc? Are you planning on buying or building one? Or perhaps you've done it already? What questions do you have? Leave them in the comments below. I look forward to the discussions. As always, thank you for watching, keep on spotting, and I'll see you next time. Cool. Yay!